This is a Mr. G production. Whoosh. Hey guys, welcome back to another virtual art lesson with Mr. G. Let me just zoom this out a little bit more so you can see more of the table here. Welcome back. So we are here, um, we're gonna be talking about paper lanterns and I'm really excited to teach you about them. There's so many um, different ways to make them and the stories behind them. Hopefully by now, I'm sure you've read through your lesson that I created um, that would have come up before the links for this video. So I'm glad you learned a little bit about it, but I will of course go over it again while I am doing the lesson. This particular video is geared towards second through fifth grade. It's a little more challenging than the K through first grade version I made, um, only because this version is gonna use rulers and uh, a little bit more precision drawing lines and things like that and cutting than the other version. So if you're a K and one person and you're in here, welcome, let's have fun. I know you can do it. Um, clearly, you can do anything you put your mind to. I've seen it, so let's go for it. So this project starts off a lot the same way as many of the others. We're gonna do some folding. Um, so as I fold this paper here, I'm gonna make sure I get my edges and corners to line up as best I can. And I'm gonna make a taco. Now, in this project, which is different from the Matisse project, we're using a little bit of a ruler. We're going for geometric shapes. I'm not gonna do much measuring right now for the first line. I just wanna make a line that's parallel to the outer edge. In other words, if I put my ruler here, I could just trace this line here and it's parallel because it's the same length across. But in this case, I'm just gonna guess to make because I don't wanna make it that thick of a line. Let's say maybe an inch. And I'm going to draw with a pencil my line. And as you see, it's at the open edge of my V or taco, only on one side. I didn't need it on both sides. Here, now I'm going to use my ruler, and the best part about a ruler, it has numbers. Numbers help us with things like measuring and you know other important things like building bridges and things. So I'm gonna lay my ruler down, making sure I got my zero at the edge, and by now, many of you have used rulers. If not, we got family members to help us. Line up your zero at the edge, and we're gonna make one inch little dots or lines across this line using the ruler as our measurement tool. And once I have that, it looks like this. You see those little dots across here. Now I simply wanna drop my ruler and do the same thing at the bottom. Now, I had the luxury um, of doing this a little earlier, um, a couple of times, and I made this one here, which has the dots already drawn in, showing you the different dots and how they're gonna be joined up. Now I can take my ruler and connect them straight and go across. But I need to draw the lines too, I can't just cut. So I'm gonna put it down and I'm gonna start using, a, in this case I'll use my permanent marker again. I could have and I should have probably used a pencil, but it's hard to see on video, so I went with a magic marker and here. And the reason why we, I recommend a pencil or something else for the first step is so, because you're gonna see permanent marker come through the other side. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's not necessarily a desired effect for this project here. And then I get to the point where I have all my dotted lines and I have them here. So I've got everything I need. Now, just like we did last week when we were working with Matisse, we're gonna be cutting. I'm gonna be cutting through both layers, through the V and stopping at the solid line. So we've done these before, we've always had questions. When do I stop, do I cut through? Well, the dotted lines you cut through and you stop at the dark line, simple as that. If for some reason you did it wrong and you um, didn't get it right the first time, try the second time, the third time. I make mistakes too and I do this for a living. It happens sometimes. Uh, we get distracted and we're not paying attention to what we're doing. But please do not lose attention or get distracted when you're cutting. We don't want our fingers to get in the way. And I, just so you know, guys, I am using a simple, regular kid scissor here. I'm not using anything um, that you wouldn't have at home. Uh, and if you're using a big scissor at home, be careful, okay? Always be careful. Um, cutting, 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 cutting. You're gonna get to the end. And when I get to the end, I sh will have the beginning element of what's gonna make the structure and body of my lantern here. Again, be careful and stop. Now I'm gonna look at this here. I'm gonna unfold it. Now for some reason you unfold it and you get a big octopus. That means you, you, you didn't necessarily fold it the wrong way but you cut from the wrong direction. 
that's the case, the easiest thing to do is just start again than it is to just try to put it back together. Now, if I was just to take this, I don't want to see my magic marker dots on the outside of my lantern. Um, but the problem though, is right now if I just roll this across, I am going to see those dots. Now that has a very cool desired pattern. If that's what you want to do, then you go for that. If you want to make it so you see the clean side of the paper, you do have to reverse the folds and it's not very hard. And while I do that, I'm going to talk to you a little about the history of, um, of these lanterns. And um, before I actually go into the specific history of it, lanterns themselves um, bring light to darkness. Um, throughout time, a single lantern can bring many people light. And uh, when I came up with this project, I was trying to find ways to make projects not only fun for being home, but understandably meaningful. And the symbol of a, of a lantern is bringing light in the times of darkness. And right now we're all having a little bit of you know, darkness happening and we're all doing the best we can. And lanterns will bring us that light. And that's, I think, a really cool idea uh, for this particular lesson. And now that I reverse my folds, now I can easily bend over my design and roll it over itself. And because I used a ruler and I measured, all my increments are one inches. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back, I'm going to make sure my folds are nice and tight. We want that so they don't not only necessarily unfold, but they make it easier for you to put the things together. Now, I want to use, in this case, I'm going to use masking tape because that's what I'm going to use. But um, I want to make sure that I pre-rip some tape off to the side and leave it on the edge of my table. So this way, I don't have to put the project down as I'm working. I'm able to just continuously work and grab pieces. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm taking little pieces like this and putting it on the edge of my table so it's easy to grab. Now, I'm going to take my sculpture or beginning of a sculpture of my lantern and I'm going to overlap that first segment completely. And if that overlap first segment was measured, which again, we use rulers, it makes one inch, it should line up exactly right, and I'm gonna connect it with a piece of tape, and then maybe use two pieces of tape. Now, if you were using glue sticks, you might have to hold it down longer, because you know how glue can be sometimes, it doesn't wanna stick right away. In this case, it lines up, that, so this first segment is actually, if you look at it, it's overlapping the other segment. So it helps actually like lock it in and hide itself away. Line it up. Take my tape, connect it, do it a couple of times. So I really want it to be secure. I don't want it to pop open. And if I wanted to, I could add a piece of tape. Now you see this is the doubled up when it went overlapping. That's fine. You could do that and you could just leave it like that. Um, there are other ways to connect them together um, that I will you know, show you on something else in a minute. Um, but you get the idea. Now this one is, this one's blank and has, it's a simple one inch cut giving you this result here. Now, as I do this, you know, it's really going back to that same shape. But if I want to um, alter its shape and give it some sort of rounded shape, I could go to these things and just literally just re reinforce the folds that were actually never made in the beginning from the top. So you're basically just kind of bending back the paper along these folds where the original line cut was. And by doing that, we're altering that first upper shape or lower shape, depending upon how you're holding your, your lantern, into a really interesting shape that has a different bottom than it does top, which of course you can then decorate using different things. Um, I should have mentioned, and I don't think I did yet, um, the lanterns were around 200 BC um, in China. They were utilized during the festival. Now, lanterns have been used a lot throughout history, but the particular story I want to talk about is for the, um, it was the, Chinese Lantern Festival is the day that wraps up the 15th day of the Lunar Year celebration. Um, people would go to this big festival with their lanterns, adorned and colored and beautiful, you know, all these different things, and just, but there'd be a riddle on them. And the riddle was something people would solve. The riddle was on your lantern in some shape or form, and you, I think the answer, if I'm not mistaken, was somewhere on the lantern in terms of how to solve the riddle. Um, I did one here we're using, instead of one inch increments, I used half inch increments and by doing that I'm able to get a different kind of desired finished results. I wanted this one to be more organic looking and bendy and by, what I did is before I actually made it on a yellow piece of paper I made my riddle. Red plus yellow equals and the answer is actually on my lantern, the orange. Now 
I didn't have to do a riddle. That's just one thing that lanterns can be used for. But you can pre-draw elements that get you to this point. So by taking a striped piece of paper, excuse me, let me change that, a piece of paper and making stripes by using a ruler and going back and forth, I then made my lantern into something like this. So the pattern itself carries through each segment of the pattern of the, excuse me, each segment of the lantern. And then the top part was made in addition to match the other part using a separate piece of paper. And then I rolled a piece of black paper through the middle of it and attached it. How you do that is up to you. Your fingers are more nimble than mine. Figuring that out will not be a challenge for you. I know it. Um, and there's other things I wanted to show you here as well. Um, I pre-drew, and I'm going to show you on the other one there, another way to put them together, a rainbow. I did the folding thing already. I haven't connected anything yet, but I really think that this can look really, really cool when it was all done. If I added extra details here, if I drew patterns, added a cool handle, I think a rainbow would make a really nice, nice piece of artwork for a, um, to make a lantern. Now, before I show you another way to connect them together, um, when you finish your lanterns and you're adding other pieces, use your skills that you've learned in art with me. Cutting pieces out, overlapping paper to cut and get the same shape over and over again is important, being careful, of course. Adding a long piece of paper, cutting a zigzag on one edge can create a really cool zigzag line to be attached. Um, I used for this one a piece of regular notebook paper and I used the old fashioned pop-up book technique in these little corners here, which then I just cut and pop them through, which is a little, a little more challenging uh, and especially on this kind of paper, but it's fun to look at. And then you could also add other folds. So instead of just having the one fold that was in the middle, I actually took this segment and folded it again at the top half and made that. So to show you that one real quickly, I would simply just take this segment that we've been looking at this whole time, it's like what I showed you, and simply just find the middle of that and let go, and now you've got another segment. So now you've gotten another look, another visual result based on the way you folded it. This one was made from a small piece of pattern paper, a little stronger, like um, scrapbooking paper, and you get that two-tone look, which I really like, which you could do yourself. If you don't have two-tone paper, glue one color to one side to the other side, let it dry, and make it into your project. Now, this is the one I wanted to show you how to connect it another way. I made a pattern on this paper. I'm going to connect it here the way I would overlap it. But because I'm measuring it, I'm able to do something a little bit differently. I can take my first segment and actually cut it out of my project. Just physically, literally just remove it so it looks like this. You don't have to do this. You can overlap the segments. So I just wanted to show you another way. Now taking this one and connecting it will literally put the next piece exactly next to the other one without one underneath it. So that's up to you. And I'm going to quickly connect that one to show you what I mean. So I did that one there. I'm going to put this one here. It lines right up. So now there is no other segment that kind of pops out from the other. I did use um, masking tape here, which is not desirable, especially how pretty this thing is, but you get the idea of how it works. So now where they joined up together, there's no extra piece hiding, which also can give it a cool look. And as you do your bending and things, those patterns can become really cool elements of design on your lanterns. So I thought that was really cool. And then using scrap paper, you could simply decorate, design, add on to, take away from, cut, add on, do what you have to do. You, you know how to do this. You've been doing this a long time with me and have great skills that um, I'm always very proud of and amazed by. Um, this one here, I just want to point out, was made with half inch cuts. And then I, in the middle, I added little wider ones, almost like a, a rolled up tube, like this would be inside this one here, like this, except and to show you how I did that, it's as simple as rolling it up, putting it to where you want to go, let it go. It tells you how big the, the hole is and you just attach it. It's really kind of easy. But in this case, I used just a few th thicker pieces of purple paper and it just added the same, gave it a little bit extra strength and I like the way it looks. It's real pretty. And another thing I mentioned uh, about some options are using string because you hang lanterns up. And, um, you know, we go to the festival, you're going to hang it up and show it to people. In this case, we're probably hanging them at our home or outside. But if you were to aim, picture a flashlight or a light, even the sun aiming at this while it's spinning, the shadows, the lights you'd get are very cool to look at and um, 
depending upon the shape of your lantern, will dictate the shape of your light and shadow. So I want you to experiment with things like that and always experiment. There's no wrong way to do this. Um, if you want to pre-draw something crazy and wild and then you want to turn it into a lantern, you go for it. If you pre-draw something crazy and wild and you go, oh no, I don't want to cut it up, don't cut it up, that's okay. Make something else, then cut that one up. No matter what you do, I'm always happy with you and proud of you. Um, I may have flown through a little bit some of, oh, the, in terms of in the lesson plan that's on, it, on the um, assignment, there are some examples of riddles. Uh, if you want to do riddles, and some of the riddles on there um, are funny, like, um, what was one of the riddles here? Uh, what goes up every year but never goes back down? And that could be a question on your riddle. And the answer is your age. So think about the cool ways you could add patterns and designs, maybe a riddle, maybe not. What you can do is up to you. Um, just be creative, have fun. I look forward to seeing your results. I miss you all so much. Um, teaching this way is very different for me, and, um, but it's been great corresponding with many of you, and the results have been fantastic. Ideally, we'd like to try to upload these through the classroom. This way it stays in the system with all the others. And of course, you can always email me directly if you can't get into the classroom, which many of you did already. Um, any other questions, I'm sure I'll we'll hear and see you on the internet. I miss you all. Um, make your lanterns, enjoy the process, take your time, and just never stress about this stuff. This is there for you to relax and, and empty your minds and brains and to, to take you to a place where you need to be sometimes, and that's just to relax and be creative, and this is what this is for. So um, I look forward to your results again, and um, I'll see you soon. Take care.